This video uh, is about frequency distributions. So once again we have our group of people and this time we want to know about their height. So we want to find a way of um, depicting the heights of this group of people. Okay, so then what we're going to do is measure each of these people's height, heights. And so what we have over here is um, the raw data. So each of these numbers is one observation, so it's the height in inches of one person. So we've got 30 um, heights listed here. So this shows us something about the heights of the sample, but um, there's a better way of organizing the data. We can um, make a frequency distribution, which is one uh, really useful way um, of looking at data. So a frequency distribution shows the data in a different format. So here are all of our uh, raw data, so the individual, 30 individual observations. So to create a frequency distribution, we're going to list all of the um, values within the range of heights that are represented by our data. So the way we create our frequency distribution is by creating our a set of what are called bins. And the bins represent the possible values in the data set. So you can just imagine them as uh, little containers, okay, for each value. And then, um, so this one is contains 59, this contains 60, 61, 62. So when you're making the frequency distribution, you start with this set of bins, okay? And then once you have your bins, then you go and look in the data and you see, well, how many values, how many observations um, go in each of these bins. So this is bin for 59. So you look over here, how many observations are 59. So all of those observations that are 59 go into this bin and so on. And so your bins are constructed from the data. Uh, they, inc they include all possible values uh, that your data uh, that your um, data could have. Okay, so here are your um, here's the frequency distribution over here. So uh, here's our bins again, okay? And then we've got um, the number of observations from over here that um, go in each bin or correspond to each bin, okay? So as you can see, we've got um, one value uh, of 59 here. And then for 60, we look over in our data for all the values that correspond to 60 and these are roughly in numerical order so um, here's 1, 60, so that goes here and we look for 61 we see that there are no 61's okay so that gets a 0 62 uh, we have 1, 2 and then sort of out of place we have 3 okay so that goes over here so you just continue down putting um, the number of observations from the data set that correspond to each of these bins. And what's important is that the bins be um, of equal size. Okay, so each of these bins contains values that, um, you know, within one inch. Okay, so this is, um, this frequency distribution is a much cleaner and um, clearer and more organized way of looking at the data than just looking at a list of raw observations, raw heights from 30 people. Um, so it's more consolidated. But we can simplify it even more by creating um, fewer bins. Okay, so over here on the left we've got the frequency distribution that we were just looking at where the bins are um, the size of one inch, okay? Um, but over here, we've created a smaller, more compressed, um, collapsed frequency distribution, which gives us a sort of, it's easier to get a quick glance at the data by, um, and we've done this by changing the bin size. So we increase the size of the bins 
Um, and what you see here is that at the extremes of the data, um, where you have fewer observations, a lot of times your bin size might be larger, so you might just try to capture all of the um, observations at the low end in one bin and similarly at the high end. This bin doesn't even really need to be here. But, um, the, but the majority of the bins, it's really important that they be the same size, so equivalent sizes. So these bins are all about, these bins are all two inches um, in uh, the size of two inches. So what we've done, um, just to make sure it's clear, is we've taken this, this lowest bin, this, this uh, lowest height bin, 61 or less, okay, are all the observations here. So you just take the 61, 60, 59, so that's two observations collapsed into here. 62 and 63, we just go over here and look, 62 and 63, we've got five, okay, over here, so that goes here. 64 and 65, right, over here, so we've got seven, and similarly for the other, so 66 and 67, again we've got seven, 68, 69, we've got four, 70, 71, we've got five, so that's it. Okay, so we just collapse the data, and we can, we can create bin sizes uh, however big we want, it just depends on how we want to look at the data, um, how fine-grained of an analysis we want to do with the data. But um, what we notice here is um, that these frequencies, these are raw frequencies, okay, so they're just the, the total number of observations in our data set that have each of these um, values. And so what um, might be more helpful is to know what proportion of the data fall within each of these bins. And to do that we want to create a relative frequency distribution. So the relative frequency distribution tells us what proportion of the data fall within each of these bins. So to create that um, relative frequency distribution, what we have to do is just calculate the proportion of data in each bin. So starting with uh, the first bin, 61 or less, what proportion of the data fall within that bin? Well, it's 2 out of 30. So um, we calculate 2 out of 30 equals 0 0.07. Okay, and then that goes into that bin. Then the next one is um, 5 out of 30. 5 observations out of 30 have a height of 62 or 63. So that similarly 5 out of 30 equals 0.17. So putting it in this box. And so we just complete that um, the this column calculating the proportion um, of data in each of the bins 7 out of 30, 7 out of 30, 4 out of 30, 5 out of 30. So we'll do that. So now we've calculated all the proportions and um, put them in this um, relative frequency column and then these these um, proportions all add up to 1. So here's our relative frequency table, and just to be totally clear, what we've got here is the proportion, right? So it's it's uh, 2 divided by 30 equals 0 0.07. So uh, often uh, the relative frequency table is expressed in terms of percents, um, so we can just change these numbers over here from proportions to percents, and so then we'll have 7%. 17 percent, 23, and so on. And uh, that, of course, will add up to 100 percent. Okay, so just being clear, we can calculate the sort of direct calculation is in proportion, but then we can turn that easily into a percent. So often you'll see the relative uh, frequency distribution um, presented like this. And so this just says, you know, 7 percent of the data fell in this bin. 17 in this bin, etc. So 
in sum, this is a really nice, easy way to look at your data. And um, with a quick glance, you can say, oh, almost, uh, for example, 50%, you know, this is 46%, of my data fell within the range of 64 to 67 inches. So uh, this is a great way of collapsing data, getting a quick understanding of what the data look like, and um, we will use this frequently in videos to come.